And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Night Ferry to Paris by William N. Robeson. In the great smoky cavern of Waterloo Station in London, there shines a bright and tiny beacon. A neon sign in gayest red which reads, Night Ferry to Paris. Beneath the sign is a door. You enter, you go through customs. You board your train, you go to sleep. And next morning, when you wake up, you're in the Gare du Nord in Paris. It's that simple. Or it's supposed to be. That is Fiddy. Right this way, Governor. Oh, thank you. I beg your pardon. Huh? Yes? Uh, you're taking the night ferry to Paris. Uh, yes. Do you mind? Could I tag along? Hmm. Why, sure. And you see, I'm all alone, and it scares me, traveling alone. My uncle's meeting me in Paris in the morning. Oh, don't you but... worry, don't you worry. I'll take care of you. Here, let me carry that case. Oh, no, it's not heavy. Have you got the family jewels in there? <laughs> no, nothing like that. But uh, you can carry my coat. Okay. Thank you. Well, right through here, miss. Your bags are ready to be inspected. Thank you. For a girl who was scared and helpless, she certainly commanded service. But then why not? Who wouldn't be willing to do practically anything for the reward of that warm, golden smile? How much money are you carrying, miss? Money? Oh, I have not any money on you. My husband carries money. Oh, my heart sank. And then I saw she was pointing at me. Before I could catch my breath, the customs officer was reaching for my passport. Thank you, sir. But see here, ma'am. This gentleman's name is different. Well, uh, you see, uh, we've gotten married since these passports were issued. Oh, newlyweds. Yeah, sort of a uh, honeymoon, what? <laughs> sort of. Is there no use bothering you with a lot of silly questions? On your way, then. And good luck to you both. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, you're very kind. Thank you so much. Mouth the gate, I followed this self-possessed, newly acquired wife aboard the train and disposed of the attending porter as quickly as I could. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, yes. Pull the compartment door shut tightly as you leave. Yes, sir. Now, my dear young lady, will you kindly tell me what's the big idea? What big idea? Of identifying me to the customs as your husband. Well, it's a simplified thing. What thing? Smuggling vast sums of money out of England, perhaps? No, silly. Just to... Well, it's just the first thing that popped into my mind. Ah, well, you know, you could get into a lot of trouble lying to the customs. Well, you lied, too. What? Sure you did. You said we'd gotten married since our passports were issued. Well, I just felt I couldn't let you down. Couldn't you? No. I knew you were going to do from the first time I laid eyes on you in the station. Do what? Anything you say? Oh, of course not, but... You were sweet to carry my coat for me and to help when that silly man started asking tiresome questions. You know, if you weren't so pretty and so nuts, I'd think you were trying to get away with something. Here we go. Mm Mm-hmm. Seems so. You know something? What? Here I am, deeply indebted to you, and I don't even know your name. Why, yes, and since I'm your publicly acknowledged husband, you ought to know it. It's Morris. Tom Morris. Hmm. Could be worse. Susan Morris. <laughs> I like it. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Uh, Want to do me one more favor? Oh, sure. Change places with me. You mean you like to ride backwards? Uh-huh. Oh, no, you are not. <laughs> Tell me, where are you from? From? Oh, you still my passport. Well, yes, I know, but uh, what part of the state? Oh, California. No kidding. What part? San Francisco. Well, what do you know? Small world department. Are you from San Francisco? No. Sausalito. Sausalito? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Just across the Golden Gate from San Francisco in Marin County. <laughs> you sound like a guidebook. <laughs> do I? As it comes to traveling around so much, I haven't read anything but guidebooks for the last month and a half. Have a cigarette? Yes, thanks. Light? <laughs> What the? Oh, Look, in the cushion behind you, but you're home. Uh, if I hadn't leaned forward to give you a light. Yes, Tom. Why? Why would anybody want to shoot me? I don't know. 
Why would they, Tom? Wait a minute. You were sitting here. You asked me to change places, Susan. Why would anybody want to shoot you? something about this girl that didn't add up. Whatever it was, it wasn't helpful. And anybody in his right mind would have gotten out of there fast. But there was really nowhere to go on board the night train to Paris. And furthermore, he was one of the most enchanting and desirable femme fatales I ever hoped to meet. Well, anyway, after the assassin's bullet broke the window in her compartment, we moved to mine, agreeing to keep the matter to ourselves. After all, the train man might ask questions. Yeah, we aren't exactly in a position to answer them, are we? I have nothing to hide. But quite a bit to explain. Tom, you are becoming tiresome. Oh, I'm sorry, but you've got to admit... I don't have to admit anything. If you're going to be this way, you can go back to your compartment and freeze. <laughs> you seem to forget that that was your compartment where I nearly met an untimely end. We are now in my compartment. You wouldn't throw me out. Well, I might. I'd like to get a little sleep. Oh, you're horrid. Yeah, I know. I'm also sleepy. Oh, I wish they'd stop bumping these cars all over the place. I think you're a very dreary traveling companion. Oh, yeah? Well, just remember, you picked me up. I picked you up. Well, it certainly wasn't my idea. Sorry. Not really. Hey, did you feel that? What? This car rolled just then, like a boat. Railway cars aren't supposed to do that. Oh, this one is. They must have switched us onto the ferry. Oh. Come on, let's go out on deck. The further off from England, the nearer is to France. Then turn not pale, beloved snail, but come and join the dance. Talking about. Alice in Wonderland, the Mock Turtle song, you remember? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you join the dance? That is nonsense. Mm hmm, exactly. Oh, don't you approve of Alice in Wonderland? Not for the man who is masquerading as my husband. Very well, we'll be serious. Look out there, toward mm -hmm. that flashing buoy. Mm -hmm. What's that remind you of? Remind me? Oh. Well, it reminds me of the view from the Sausalito Ferry. Sausalito Ferry? There's no ferry to Sausalito. Well, not now, but there was... Say, when did you leave home? Frisco? Two months ago. Why? Nothing. What is the time? Oh, what difference does it make? I'm going to turn in. No, no, I, I'm no. Well, look, when a guy begins to fall for a girl a little bit, it hurts to find out that she's a phony, that's all. Who's the guy, Tom? Me. You mm -hmm. You. And why do you think she's a phony? Now, listen, Susan, or whatever your name is, wherever you come from, you don't come from San Francisco. San Franciscans would rather be condemned to live in Los Angeles than call their city Frisco. And there isn't a man, woman, or child alive in the Bay Area who didn't shed a tear when the last of the ferries, the Sausalito Ferry, was shut down a few years ago. Oh, no, Susan. I'm sure you don't come from San Francisco. As a matter of fact, you might not even be an American. Yeah, now that I come to think of it, that business in Waterloo Station calling me your husband and all, could that be because you didn't want them to look too carefully at your passport and making me carry your coat? What's in that coat, huh, Susan? Huh? Huh? You won't talk, huh? You know what I think you are, Susan? I think you're a... A spy, monsieur. What? No, Mademoiselle Suzanne is not so adept. No, she is not a spy. Merely a courier, a cutout, and a prince spy. And now, quel dommage. She may not live long enough to become anything. All right, who are you? You notice, Mademoiselle Suzanne does not ask. Tell your friend who we are, petite Suzanne. I never saw you before in my life. Either of you. But you do know who we are. I know nothing. Bravo. Bravo. Uh, the monsieur, permit me. I am Anton. 
And my rather large companion holding the gun is Raoul. The identity of our employer is of no consequence to you, but I think you may wish to know that our assignment is to relieve Mademoiselle Suzanne of a certain small package she carries. You are mistaken. I carry nothing on me. On you or in you, we will find it. No, I swear oh, now, to look, you. Now, look, look, this is nuts. Now, just put down that gun and stop playing cloak and dagger. We are not playing, monsieur. Our... Oh! Hey, let go of my throat. I'll, I'll report this to the captain. Go on, go on. Shout your head off. In this wind, he'll never hear you. Provoke Raoul and he'll shoot you, monsieur, and dump you over the side. No one will know. The gun has a silencer. Sit as here, Raoul. I don't believe it. I don't believe I'm hearing all this. Susan, it's, it's not true, is it? I don't know what they're talking about. Monsieur, you have given us a great deal of trouble and we want no more of it. Of course, we realize that you are innocently involved in this matter. Mademoiselle Suzanne attached herself to you in what a station the moment she realized we were on her tail. That's not so. You know it is. Why deny it? And you are right, monsieur, in surmising that she identified you as her husband as a diversionary tactic to take attention away from her counterfeit passport. And the, uh, the shot that was fired through the train window? Oh, yes. That was intended for Mademoiselle. Had it dispatched her as planned, we would already have obtained what we are after and have left the train before her body would have been discovered. <laughs> we must get what we came after, and we will if we have to drop Mademoiselle over the side. Now, wait a minute. I was afraid you would not be... Uh, sympathetic with our ends or our means. And you were right. So we will have to place you hors de combat. Eh bien, Raoul, it's yours. Now look, look, you... Go! Please! Go! Oh, please, he's got nothing! Gently, gently, Raoul, don't you... Ne le tuez pas, Just put him to sleep. did put me to sleep, deeply, and for how long, I don't know. I dreamed sweet dreams of Susan, a dream in which I was a hero, and she was covering me with the kisses which are a hero's reward. <laughs> Excepting her voice sounded different, and her kisses were extraordinarily moist. And slowly I realized that my admirer was a French poodle, and I was slumped in the corner of the baggage car. And the car was no longer rolling and pitching, but rattling along on its rails, as a well-ordered train should, and I came awake with a start. If the train was on rail, then we were ashore and in France. And Susan, maybe Susan was somewhere back there beneath the dark waters of the English Channel. I had to find out. I had to know. I gave my poodle pal a farewell pat, started back through the train. The going was rough but unimpeded until I got to my car. And here my progress was stopped by a half-awake train of Uh, monsieur searches for something? Yeah, yeah, my compartment. Uh, which one is that, monsieur? 302. Compartment 302 is occupied. Huh? By a young lady? Yes. And, and two gentlemen. Do they have tickets? Ignatas, the hour it was late. Well, I do have a ticket, so let me buy it, please. Monsieur, may I ask, if you have a ticket, where have you been sleeping? <laughs> you won't believe this, pal, but I'll tell you anyway, in the baggage car. What? Uh, this is highly irregular. Yes, yes, it is indeed, and uncomfortable. Now let me pass. I've got to get to my compartment. But, monsieur, it is occupied. I have several others which are free. Look, I want to get into 302. But you will disturb the occupant. I doubt it. Come along with me. I may need you in case we run into any more irregularities. The puzzled train attendant followed me down the dark and silent car. Outside 302, we paused. For a moment, there was no sound from within. And then I heard the window being opened and Anton's voice. All right, mademoiselle, I give you one more chance. You tell me where that packet is, or I will throw you out the window. No! No, I told you over and over, I don't have it. You've searched my things, you haven't found it. I tell you again, I don't have it. And you will tell us where it is. Go on, mademoiselle. 
Shut up. Go ahead, Raul. Go out. No! No! I slid the door open before Raul could reach Susan. The big gunman whirled toward me and fired. But I was already diving for his ankles in a low tackle. I connected and heaved upward, and Raul toppled backwards out of the window. No! I snatched up the gun he dropped and covered Anton. Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom. Monsieur. Now, you said you had some bacon compartments. How about locking up this gentleman in one of them? But uh, why? This man is a dangerous spy who has just attempted to commit murder on your train. I insist that you lock him up and turn him over to the authorities when we arrive in Paris. I regret I cannot comply with your request, monsieur. By what authority? How do I oh, know? Oh, listen to me. Look, have you had any windows broken on your train tonight? Why, yes, in the next car in compartment A. Exactly. And this is the man who was responsible for it being broken. Monsieur, what about this? I deny it. Well, I will prove it when we get to Paris. I need not remind you, my friend, that willful destruction or breakage of state property is a crime, and the railway cars of the Chemin de Fer d'Etat are state property. Therefore, this man is guilty of a crime against the state. You have reason, monsieur, but he denies it. Ah, yes, and I accuse him of it. You'd better not take a chance, my friend. You'd better let the Sûreté decide this. Yes, I, I suppose you are right. Come along, monsieur. What? It's my regrettable duty to lock you up. Here, here, take this gun and use it if he tries anything funny. Merci, monsieur. Come along, you. Thank you, Charles. He saved my life. <sighs> Not at all. Any time. Um, don't you need that gun to protect yourself from me? No, I don't think so. You're dangerous, all right, but a gun is no protection. The only defense in a situation like this is attack. Come here. What are you going to do, Tom? Oh, just checking up on a dream. Oh, just as I thought. The real thing is better than the dream. Tom, what are you talking about? Oh, later, honey. For now, just relax. The rest of the trip was uneventful. If that's the proper description for a lovely tousled head on one shoulder, the Paris night ferry finally ground to a stop in the Gare du Nord. The man who met Susan and whom she addressed as her uncle took over the details of turning over her assailant to the police. And finally, Susan and Uncle and I were seated in the quiet corner of a sidewalk cafe, catching up over some breakfast croissant and cafe au lait. Tom is very difficult, Uncle. He won't believe a word I tell him. Mm, that's right, Monsieur. She claims she lives in San Francisco. I don't believe her. She says she's an American. I don't believe her. She says you are her uncle, and I beg your pardon, but I don't believe that either. <laughs> Well, my dear Suzanne, what a pity. Your very first assignment in your cover story is shot full of holes. You nearly get yourself killed, and you fail to deliver the package with which you were entrusted. I'm afraid you'll never make a successful agent for our country. Oh, good. Security. Security? <laughs> no, our friend Tom has guessed too much already, thanks to your uh, blundering. I did not blunder. Maybe I did not know everything I should about San Francisco, but you cannot say I did not deliver the goods. I have not received them. You will. Tom, hand me your trench coat, please. What? Here is the packet, Uncle. Zipped into the lining of Tom's trench coat for safety. Oh, no, you mean... Look, if they knew, I could... That's right. You could have been killed. Oh. And you wouldn't have cared? Well, not then. You see, this packet originally was in my coat. And I carried it aboard mm -hmm. the train? That's right. Well, well, I take it back, my dear. You have done well. <laughs> ah, it's a pity, however, we cannot avail ourselves of your services in the future. But that, of course, is now impossible since uh, Tom knows your identity. Oh, that's all right, Uncle. I have been becoming less and less interested in the career of a lady spy. I'm looking forward to Tom showing me for... Um, I mean, San Francisco. If he will. Well, I don't know. I... 
I'd like to, but is it safe? Suspense. You've been listening to Night Ferry to Paris, written for Suspense by William N. Robeson. Heard in tonight's story were William Redfield as Tom, Elaine Ross as Susan, Robert Dryden as Anton, Guy Recht as the train attendant, Brett Morrison as Uncle, and Frank Milano as Raul. Listen again next week when we return with Truck Stop by Peter Fernandez, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense.